Bioshock was one of the many games to come out in 2007, and recently the game got remastered. Of course, when I say recently, I mean like four years ago, but still today we're gonna look and see if this game holds up to what it did back in 07. But before we get to the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more, but without talking more, let's just get straight into it. Starting us off, the first thing I want to talk about is the story, which I'm going to try and keep as spoiler free as I possibly can, but it starts off with you crashing a plane which leads you to enter this tower and that then takes you to the city of Rapture where all this, this whole story and game takes place. After this though, you meet someone that sets up the story for you and you just go from there and it's a pretty simple revenge story honestly, but I will say there is a twist in the story which if you pay real close attention to you'll probably notice, but if you're just mindlessly going through the game and not paying too much attention, you're not going to notice it and it's probably going to surprise you. So keeping the story as spoiler free as it could possibly be, it's nothing great by any means, but it is interesting enough to get you invested in it. And with how it plays out, you can play the game several times over with different endings and play different styles of the game, but of course, it is the same story all the way through. Moving on, however, one thing I do want to pick at is the gun and movement mechanics. It's very interesting how they work, it's almost in like a Doom kind of way, but overall they feel very lackluster. The movement is somewhat fluent, but I feel like it could be better, and honestly, if they added B-Hop to this game, which they're not obviously, but I feel like if they did, it would make the game a lot more fluent for some reason, but that's just me. On the other hand though, gun mechanics are awful. The biggest thing I don't like here is that the guns feel like they're shooting pellets all the time, and they almost feel light in a way. They just don't feel as powerful as they should be, almost like you're shooting airsoft guns all the time. Other from this though, the other mechanics of the game, like the abilities and all that, I like a lot. Especially how you upgrade yourself in the form of killing big daddies. Yes, that's their name, remember this game came out in 2007. But they're the things you see on the cover which represent a huge 20s diver suit in my opinion, which I would imagine that's where they got the inspiration from. But you kill them, and usually they have these sisters with them, which are just little girls that you can either harvest or save for Adam, which you could then use at stations like... They almost look like juggernaut stations from uh, zombies, but you use them to upgrade yourself, so it's kind of like mini bosses throughout the game, which I like a lot, and with the abilities and everything, you can approach them in so many different ways, which I like too. Bug-wise, however, I know there were reports of bugs back in the day when this remastered came out, but I have not seen any of them, so I would assume they've been patched, and there's almost no bugs at all, to be honest. The only thing that happened was that I would get stuck on things like the side of walls or a desk or something. But other from this, the last thing I want to talk about is the setting of the game and how they use horror in the game. So if you can tell just by looking, you're in the city that's underwater, which is already cool as hell, but it's a run down and clearly not as right as you make your way through it. The whole 1920s vibe to it I like a lot as I just have this weird taste for the 20s, but it's also weird that this game takes place in the 1960s, but the city has this 20 style vibe to it, which I guess if you put it in the perspective of they've been uh, exiled away from the rest of humanity, so they've been evolving a lot less slowly, so I guess that would make sense, but it's still weird how they have all these powerful uses and future shit, but I'm rambling now. Talking about how I said it's clear rundown though, I do want to talk about how they put horror into this game, which they do very, very well. Now don't get me wrong, I wouldn't call this a horror game by any means, but I would say this is how you do horror in a game. Just with the whole atmosphere of the game and how they set up the horror and with the jump scares and all of that, it's very good how they do it. And honestly, if you want a good scare but not be scared the whole time, I would play this game. If you want more into that, I will put Nakey Jake's video in the description below because he did a very good video on this. Ending this off, however, was this game as good as it was back in 2007 and worth getting? I would say yes. While it's nothing go crazy over, the whole vibe to the game and the reputation of it is definitely worth getting. So if I were to give this game a rating, I would say it's an 8 out of 10 just cause it's very nice. The best way I could describe it is, uh, this is how you do simplicity. Nothing super complex or anything, just a nice simple game that is worth trying if you have not. And you can also find it for like $5, so it's a very nice simple game that it's not hard to get into basically, you don't have to just invest all your time, it's about an 8 hour playthrough and you can play many different times so it's a nice cheap simple game to get into and chances are you're going to like it a lot which is going to influence you to get infinite which is also a good game which I would imagine I'll do a video on later but anyway talking no longer make sure you follow me on twitch as I'm on that affiliate grind and twitter links are in the description below but until then see you.